this is not just someone that I found on the internet that's a good speaker that we, we have shown here today. Here is a true man of God. Amen. But before I introduce Mike, there, there's something I read in the Bible that really inspired me regarding business people. And it can be found in the story of the Good Samaritan. We all know the story of the Good Samaritan. There was a Jewish man. He was on his way to Jerusalem. And while he was on his way to Jerusalem, he fell among thieves. These guys beat him up and they took all his clothes, his jewelry, his finances, whatever he had. And they, they beat him so severely he was almost dead. And you would think, why did they do this to this man? But he was in this situation and the mindset of the thief was, what's yours is mine and I'm going to take it. What's yours is mine and I'm going to take it. But an amazing thing happened. A miracle happened. The Good Samaritan came along and, uh, uh, sorry, before the Good Samaritan came along, there was a Levite and a priest. And these were the religious people of the day. And as they were drawing closer to the Jewish guy, they said, you know, this is so inconvenient for us. Let's cross over to the other side so that we don't have to be inconvenienced because this is going to take time to get involved. This is going to take resources to get involved. And they had the mindset, what's mine is mine and I'm going to keep it. But then, thank God, the Good Samaritan, the hero of the story, he comes along. He sees what's happening. He, he's like moved by w what he sees. And he says, you know, I'm going to do something about it. And he goes to the man. He bandages him up. He reaches out to him. He puts him on his horse. And then he takes him to an inn. And he looks after him at the inn. He makes sure he's set up. But he has to go on a business trip. So he says to the, the owner of the inn, Look after him. He has enough money, but if he stays longer, put it on my account and I'm going to reimburse you. So the Good Samaritan had the mindset, what's mine is from God and I'm going to share it. So those are the three mindsets. What's yours is mine and I'm going to take it. What's mine is mine and I'm going to keep it. But the Good Samaritan had... The mentality, what's mine is from God, and I'm going to share it. Now, you would think that is the ultimate mindset, but I want to leave you with the greatest mindset. The greatest mindset is that everything I have is God's. It's not mine. I'm not the owner, but I'm going to steward it. So if you leave with anything today, leave with the mindset, do you want to be... Like the thief, I don't think anyone wants to be like the thief. Do you want to be like the Levite that sees all the needs and does nothing about it because in your mind, everything I have is mine? Do you want to be like the good Samaritan? Or do you want to go to the ultimate level, which is that kingdom business level? Everything I have, my intellect, my personality, my connections, my seven degrees from Harvard and Princeton and Yale, everything you have, is from God and it belongs to God and I'm going to steward it. So it gives me great pleasure to introduce to you Mike Rovner. He's a very successful businessman. He owns Mike Rovner Construction. He has about 150 staff members. He has four offices uh, in California. He owns a few businesses in other states and he's a mighty man of God and I'm so happy to call him a friend. Put your hands together for Mike Rovner. Hey, yeah, great to be back. Well, thanks for having me, uh, Pastor Jared and Pastor Lucinda. And I, I do remember the day that I met you. I do. And so um, when he came in and was telling me about what they were doing in South Africa and his upbringing, which... Um, you know, both of us come from Jewish backgrounds. You know, there was just an instant connection. And one of the things that um, I just loved was that he had this um, anointing, which uh, let me use a non-Christian word for that. Just this thing that God had put on him uh, to win the loss, 
right? And I had been praying about the people at my business and that I wanted to win them. And so uh, when he came and uh, there was a reason why I gave him a watch is that uh, that was a watch that I had worn for uh, probably, I would wear a watch for like six months and then I would uh, give them away. And the Lord told me that I had a, like a prosperity anointing on my hands and to give it to people. And so I, I gave the watch to him, um, uh, not just because I wanted to give him uh, the uh, prosperity anointing, but I wanted his anointing to win the lost. And since that time, uh, 15 years ago, um, my, through my company, we've seen thousands of business people give born again. And so uh, the Bible says, he who wins souls is wise. And so I want to share a little bit about my story. And so if you read my bio, it says that I've been an entrepreneur since the age of 13, which is true. From the age of 13, I was a drug dealer. And so, but I don't do it anymore. It's been three weeks since I stopped. No, kind of a little bit of rough economy. No, uh, so uh, all the uh, role models in my life, uh, my, my three uncles were all drug dealers. And so it was kind of like family business. And um, so I, I was in that, uh, that lifestyle of, uh, of selling drugs and then um, started getting addicted to drugs and my life started to fall apart. Um, and then when I was in my mid-20s, I met this woman who's now my wife. And uh, she's the most beautiful woman I've ever seen. And um, so she was, uh, she was, uh, uh, I was selling drugs to her, right? And I loved her. She, and she was a black, uh, uh, a backslidden Christian. And I had never been to church my whole life. I was, I was uh, a Jewish young man that we were not a practicing Jewish family. And she said, Mike, I want to get, we started dating and, she said, Mike, I want to get my life right with God. And she goes, I'm going to church tomorrow. Will you go with me? And look at, I was following her around like a little puppy dog, right? I'd go anywhere she asked. And I always tell people this. When you fall in love with a woman, you'll do just about anything they say. So on this Sunday, she takes me to church. I'd never been there before. First time ever in a church. After the service, she drags me up to the front. There's a little woman there. And the woman says, say this prayer and repeat it after me. And I'm like, sure. And here's the prayer. God, come in our life. And take the things out of our life that you want out and put the things in that you want in in Jesus' name. Really simple prayer, right? Well, a very... Unusual thing happened the next day as my house got raided by the police. I always tell people, be very careful for what you pray for. It might just happen. I'm in jail that night. I cried out to God and I'm like, God, how could this happen? I just prayed today and I gave you my life. It's literally... You know, and I was the unchurched, right? I didn't know how God could speak to your heart. I mean, I didn't know anything about that. I literally, the first time I felt God speak to my heart and said, I did this for you. I have a new plan for your life. And that was 30 years ago. And just coming up on 31 years. Uh, uh, my wife said we are Christian and uh, now, so we had to find a church and uh, we found a church and the, the pastor became my first positive male role model. And so um, I had, uh, you know, obviously I was Christian now, so I, I had quit selling drugs and, you know, I was going through, like, I, and afterwards, like I was Christian and I had to go to jail afterwards because, you know, like it was like court case and then went to jail, you know, like my first six months of being a Christian. And, um, you know, like I, but it was pretty simple. It was like this, um, why are they, I got to go to work for a low, so I still got to work. And I had this little drywall repair business. And um, so whatever the pastor would preach on Sunday, I would just take it and apply it to this little drywall repair company. I had like two guys working with me. And um, 
And because I applied the word of God to my business, it began to grow supernaturally. I mean, it went from, you know, one in, one employee, you know, to two, to five, to 10, and then we made a jump to 20, to 50, to 100. And at one time we had 500 before the pandemic, 500 employees working in three different states. And so what I want to share with you is if you apply the word of God to your business, to your life, he will do the same thing in your business and in your life that he's done in ours. If he can use me, an ex-drug dealer, drug addict with no education, then think what he could do for you. Okay, uh, Pastor Jared uh, was said something about, you know, all your degrees in Harvard. You know, so I speak at these real estate conferences now, right? These secular real estate conferences. And it's really cool because I go there and I share the scriptures. I just don't say Proverbs, you know, 11.1, uh, right? I just say what this, the scripture is. And I, I, I talk about biblical principles, right? But I just don't say it's in the Bible. And so I will sit up on these panels. And then one guy will go, I have a degree from Harvard and also a second degree from Stanford and then Southern one from a business school and all these alphabet soup letters next to their name. And then it comes to me and I'll go, my name is Mike Rovner and I went to the school of hard knocks. So um, well, uh, one thing I want to share with you guys um, is that uh, I created a website and a platform uh, with resources specifically for Christian business people and non-Christians on uh, all kinds of different subjects. And you can download them all for free. And if you go back to the, the table, you can see them. And it's um, our website is free. It's uh, uh, if you want to take it, your business to the next level from natural to supernatural, we encourage you to visit our website, thriveteaching.org or scan the QR codes on the screen. And we have all kinds of resources and I, uh, we've created them all. And I, it's kind of like uh, my wife said, um, this is kind of like your yacht, Mike. Some of your friends went out and bought yachts. You created this website and this platform to, um, uh, to encourage and to help business people go to the next level. So uh, we want you to have those. Okay, so today I'm going to be sharing on what I call is, uh, um, is the supernatural triangle. And these are, uh, these are the... The, the principles of the Bible that the Lord has put deep inside of my heart. And so uh, how it kind of started was, you know, I, I was kind of uh, discipling like uh, five or six guys, you know, that um, their businesses have all grown to multi-million dollar businesses. And um, uh, I was praying and saying, Lord, uh, should I do more of this? And, and I really felt like the Lord said, this is what I want you to do is to teach other business people what you do. And so uh, that's how I, I, I started a ministry. And just a, a quick story about uh, starting to do ministry because, you know, uh, I'm doing a ton of stuff, right? Like I, I, I own this uh, a construction company in California that has several offices. And, uh, and then we have uh, uh, property, uh, real estate companies in two other states. And I'm the marketplace pastor of my church. And we have about 200 people in business at my church that my wife and I uh, pastor. Um, and then we have Thrive Teaching, our, our nonprofit, right? So I remember when I was first, I didn't even know I was doing ministry for years, right? It was probably 2008 before I even figured out I was doing ministry. And so I didn't know I was a minister, right? And I was talking to one of my friends and I said, you know, hey, it's not like I'm a minister or anything. And he goes, hold on a second. And this guy knows all the biggest ministers in the world, right? He goes like this, Mike, you are the most effective minister I've ever met. And I'm like, really? I am? So I started praying. I said, Lord, if I'm doing ministry, will you show me how to do it? And this is what the Lord told me. First of all, never make it about money. Ministry is about people. Number two, never try to build your own kingdom. Try to build the kingdom. And everything you do will be supernaturally successful. And that's why we created this. And we put it online. You could grab it. It's literally all the wisdom that God's given me over the last 30 years is on that platform. And it's for you for free. And the Bible says, freely you've been given. So freely give out. So I wrote this, uh, the first uh, session 
specifically for you. And so as entrepreneurs, we are focused on something called ROI. Do you know what that means? Anyone know what ROI is? Return on investment. And I wanted to tell you, and I, I'm totally focused on, on all, in all of our businesses on return on investment. How much time does it take? How much money do we have to put in? How long will it take? What will the return be on our investment? And I want to talk to you the, the first session on the greatest ROI you possibly could have. Exponentially, the greatest ROI that I've ever had. I've, I've done some investments, and I'll just be honest with you. I've done some investments that have uh, doubled, tripled, and some have quadrupled in one year. That's a great return on investment, right? Great. I mean, it's, you know, like most people, if they make 10%, you know, like it's a, oh, that's a good deal, right? It's really a good deal. 10%. Is a really good deal, and some I've done some investments that made four thousand um, percent in one year, and they're not even close to the greatest uh, investment that I've ever made. The greatest investment, the greatest return on your investment, is to spend time with Jesus. It's been the greatest return on investment of any investment I've made in my life. It has a multi generational potential blessing for your life. This is 1 Timothy um, 4 eight, one of my favorite uh, scriptures in the, uh, the Good News translation. It says, physical exercise has some value. The exercise has value. But spiritual exercise is valuable in every way because it promises life both for the present and for the future, the future generations will be blessed on the time that you spend with Jesus. This is Deuteronomy 8, 17 and 18. I, I just love these scriptures. They're my foundational, some of my foundational verses. He did all this so you would never say to yourself, I have achieved this wealth on my own strength and energy. Remember the Lord your God. He is the one. God is the one that gives you the power to be successful in order to fulfill the covenant he confirmed to your an ancestors with an oath. And, and I, I found this little blurb and I want to read it to you. It's uh, for um, Deuteronomy 8.18. 8, it says, there is no such thing as a self-made man. There is no such thing as a self-made man. Some like to boast of their uh, accomplishments. Yet the intelligence, the health, the drive that make accomplishments possible all come from God. All we are and all we have is ultimately his gift. And this is something we need to remember and never forget. I love what uh, Pastor Jared said about everything belongs to God. And I think that was what uh, Jan and I, we were just starting out. Like we had, we had two kids, we were living in a little apartment and you know, like we just, I remember just praying, you know, like she, she was uh, assisting people cutting their hair. You know, she, uh, she was assisting people cutting their hair and I was a drywall repairman. And we, our prayer was God, may her businesses give glory to your name. Okay. We never tried to be successful financially. What our goal was, we wanted to be the biggest givers in our church. And God moved supernaturally in our lives. So I want to talk to you a little bit about um, a, a little bit about what um, what I do as a, a daily discipline, and, and what does it look like for you? Because I think it looks like something different for everybody. And so, um, you know, for me, it's um, like I my wife is like a scripture gobbler, right? She just she's like Pac Man with scripture, right? She'll read a thousand scriptures. Where me, I'm, I'm a little simpler. Like, I'm a real simple guy. I'll read one verse a thousand times. So um, it, it looks different to everybody. And you just got to figure out what it looks like for you. Um, you know, uh, at, in this season of my life, um, I, I'm shooting for seven days a week. The first thing I do when I get up in the morning, you know, like the first thing I do is I, 
crack my phone open and I put worship music on and I, and I start to uh, praise and give God glory and worship God first thing in the morning. I shoot for seven days a week and I just want to be candid with you. I usually get five, you know, cause something, something might happen or go on, you know, but I shoot for seven days a week. The first thing I do when I get up in the morning is I praise and worship God. And so I want to, I want to uh, share with you a little bit about uh, my story with speaking. So, uh, and a lot of people like that hear me speak, like afterwards, they'll come up to me and they'll go, oh my gosh, like you're not that great of a speaker. And I'm like, thank you. And they go, no, you're just not very polished. And I go like this, I don't want to be polished. I just want to be powerful. I just want to be anointed. Okay, I don't have a pinky ring. I'm sorry. I, I was asking someone, hey, should I go out and buy alligator shears? I mean, will that make me look better or will it make me sound better? And so um, when I first got born again, you know, a few years, uh, after a few years, uh, let me tell this story too. It's like uh, after a few years, like uh, being born again, my pastor said to me, like we went out, I walked with him over to the hospital and we were praying for someone that was sick. And um, afterwards walking back, he's like, Mike, clearly there's an anointing on your life. Maybe you should quit your job and go into ministry. And so, because there was a time where people used to think that like you could only be used by God by being on a platform. And I want to tell you that is not true. God could use you in your work. God, you can use you everywhere. And so um, I prayed about it and I really felt like the Lord said, Hey, you're right what I want you to do. And so um, I just think, you know, like if I would have quit my job and uh, became a pastor, I probably would have been a pastor of a church of 20 people. Okay. Cause I'm just, you know, like to be a pastor, you got to be really nice. Okay. And I'm just not that nice. I mean, sometimes when people are uh, pastoring people now, right. They're like, Hey, um, you know, like I'm running out of, you know, like, uh, um, I'm having a money problem. I'm like, are you tithing? You know, like. They're like, no, don't you want to hear what's going on? I'm like, no, if you're not tithing, I don't want to even hear it, right? And then someone will go, hey, I'm fighting with my wife. I'll go, go tell her you're sorry. And they're like this to me. They're like, well, don't you want to know what happened? And I'm like, why? Does it really matter? Just go humble yourself before your wife. I mean, hey, look at the, I'll just tell you what the scripture says in Ephesians 5.25. It says, Husbands, love your wife like Christ loved the church who gave him itself up for her. And, you know, in, um, and what did Christ do for the church? He died for the church. So if you're asking my advice on what to do for your wife, if you're not willing to die for her, then yeah, you're going to have some issues in your marriage. So go tell her you're sorry. So uh, a brand, uh, brand, uh, brand new Christian pastor says, I'd like you to uh, get up and give your testimony. And I gave up and gave my testimony. And it, it was pretty powerful because, you know, like I kind of have a unique story. I, I mean, how many people have got born again and went to jail the next day? I mean, it's not something that usually happens. So I gave my testimony and it was, you know, like there was some power and authority because we overcome the devil by the, uh, the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony, which is a story of how God has worked in your life. And so uh, then like a couple months later, he said, hey, would you like to teach on a Thursday night? And I'm like, who, me? And he goes, yeah, teach on a Thursday night. You know, like you could do a, a, a little message and, um, and I'll help you if you want. And, you know, I don't know why I didn't ask him for his help. And I, I just got up there on a, a Thursday night and uh, to teach for the first time. And I got up there and I had some scriptures and I, I read some scriptures. And then I couldn't remember, I didn't really prepare very well. And I couldn't remember what I was going to say. And I stood up there for two minutes without saying a word. The most awkward two minutes of my life. <laughs> Literally. And I was just horrified. And then I said, okay, I'm done. And I went and sat down. <laughs> A couple of weeks later, I talked to my pastor and he's like the nicest guy in the world, right? He like would never say a negative thing about anyone. And he said, hey, Mike, when you preached, that was, and he just didn't say anything else. 
So I, you know, like, instead of saying it was bad, he just didn't say anything, right? I was horrified. And then I started to feel this sense inside me. I want you to start to teach. I'm like, Lord, remember last time that I did that? Remember how bad it was? And so I went up to my pastor and I said, hey, pastor, I, I'd like to try again on a Thursday night. And this, this like, it took him almost two years, okay? And he said, are you sure? Because last time you preached, it was, and he didn't say the last, and he go. I said, I know I'm, I'm sure, pastor. And so um, I said, can you help me? And uh, he helped me. We put together an outline. And uh, I, I started studying the scriptures that I was uh, speaking on. And uh, I took three days off work. And so I, I studied and I prayed. I fasted, which I hate fasting. Okay. I hate it. I don't know why God invented that, man. Oh, it's just like. But I will tell you this. There's not one thing else in your life that will, because when you deny yourself of food, it, there's something supernaturally that happens in your life. We're doing, we're doing a fast right now. Like uh, uh, just to be candid with you, I'm on day nine of a liquid fast. I never done it before. I've been the worst faster. I mean, everybody in our church looks like Skeletor after a 21 day fast. I gained like five pounds, right? <laughs> you know, I've just been horrible at it. This is the first year that I was like, I'm going to do it. And you know, it took a couple of days, but God has definitely broken some things off my life. So if you if you guys are in the middle of fast, jump in with uh, Pastor Jared and Ashley said that God will move in your life. And it might not be like glitzy and glamoury, but God started working on my heart, started like revealing, like carrying some things away, like an onion, like some deep levels of, hey, you have something in your heart you need to be removed. And, and I repented of it. And so God will move supernaturally in you. It's not going to change God, but it will do something and affect your heart. So going back to the story, uh, you know, I took three days off work. I, I studied, I prayed, I went through scripture after scripture. Um, I, I put together an outline and uh, then the Thursday night came for me to speak. And just to be honest with you guys, I listened to my first tapes. They are so bad. It was so bad, but it was so much better than the last time. At least I didn't take two minutes and not share, right? And it just started. And so over like, it was probably a five or six year period. Like I would uh, speak, uh, I would teach like probably 12 Thursday nights a year. And I did that for a few years where I took three days off work, 12 times a year, prayed, went over scriptures and, um, and worship God. And I would just, they would, my work would say, Hey, you, we can't get a hold of Mike. He's in uh, something like church zone or something. Like we can't even find him. Right. And I will tell you this after that, you know, through that time, this is what I found out the two weeks after I, uh, spoke, um, I would see supernatural things happen in my business. And it was not because like anything had changed in my business. It was that I had a sensitivity to the Holy Spirit. Like I'd be out on job sites and someone would, uh, someone would be telling me something and somebody else would be telling me something and the Holy Spirit would say, he's telling you the truth, he's lying. I, I was on one, uh, one job site and I was like, there's a problem on that building. And someone came back to me and said, how did you know there was a problem on that building? You can't even see it from where we're standing. I signed the biggest contracts I had ever signed in those weeks after I had took three days off with the Lord. I solved problems that nobody else could solve. I remember uh, we were, uh, our company had grown and we were on one job site and um, we were bidding this. It was a large job and we were re replacing windows. And the bit, it was a big job and you know, our company had grown significantly and by that time. And uh, the job was like $750,000. And so I was meeting with the owner to negotiate the contract. And the owner goes, you know, um, you know, I'd like to use you on these windows. Um, 
you know, like the windows had been started, but nobody had finished them. And he goes like this to me, he goes, I'd like to use you, but instead of paying you 750,000, I'd like to pay you 675,000. And so we couldn't take that kind of discount. And uh, while, I was, while he was talking to me, I heard the Holy Spirit say, he doesn't care about the money. All he cares about is the quality. So I go like this to him. I go, you know what? How about this? You paid me full price and I guarantee not one window will leak. And he said, if you can guarantee that no windows leak, I will pay you full price. I didn't know that he had hired a contractor prior to using us and every window that he installed leaked. People in my office started going, Mike, you're the greatest negotiator we've ever seen. But the truth was I had just spent an extended time with Jesus. And when you spend an extended time with Jesus, God will do something supernatural in your life. And I don't know how it applies to you guys. I don't know. You know, some of the things I did was I went through and I started researching all the scriptures I could find on prosperity. I put together them for a booklet. You could get them in the back. I put together all the scriptures I could find on serving. I put together, these are all the, the subjects I'm going to share with you today. I put, uh, I put together a scripture list of integrity, one of the areas that God really dealt with me uh, uh, on perseverance, on humility, and, uh, and on taking courage um, and uh, overcoming fear. And I have all those scripture cards for you in the back. And those are the subjects that I'm going to share on with you guys today. And here's some of the benefits that I found from spending time with Jesus is that first is there's a tremendous download of wisdom that you get. And it's not an earthly wisdom because the Bible says that a man's wisdom is like filthy raw rags in comparison to the wisdom of God. And so uh, let me give you some scriptures on wisdom because that's what I found one of the the greatest benefits of spending time with Jesus is you get a download on the wisdom of God, which could, I mean, you know, like you're going to be, you get, you have the potential uh, to grow your business, but that sometimes just means that you're going to have more significant challenges and you need the wisdom of God. I mean, I don't have a degree. I don't have a master's degree in organizational leadership, but people that have master's degree, master's degree, in organizational leadership will come to me and ask me for wisdom. Here's, a, here's what the Bible says about wisdom. For it's Proverbs 3, 14 and 15. It says, for wisdom is more profitable than silver and her wages are better than gold. Wisdom is more precious than rubies. Nothing you desire and compare with her. And so um, I remember uh, years ago, I um, might, you know, I, one of my business was first started and, uh, and sometimes now too, the, I've been in these kind of, uh, situations. I, I was in my office and maybe you've done this before. Has anyone ever prayed to God and said, God, send me money. Has anybody else done that? <laughs> Raise your hand. If you prayed and asked God for money, the ones that their hand is not raised, you're lying. I remember like being in a position where I had to make payroll and it was overwhelming. And I, I was like, God, send me money. And, and it wasn't because I wanted a bunch of money for Janet and I. It was because I had bills to pay. Um, my son had like uh, this thing on his eye that had to be removed. The kids needed braces. I mean, like I needed some financial help. And I'm like, Lord, send me money. And the Lord spoke to me and said, you don't have a money problem. You have a wisdom problem. So my next prayer was like this. God sent me wisdom. <laughs> James 1 5, it says, if any of you lacks wisdom, and this, wi this word wisdom in the Greek is the word Sophia, and it means right application of truth. If any of you who lacks right application of truth, you should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault and it will be given to you. You know, I love the, the first verse, Proverbs 3.13 in the message translation. It says, wisdom is better than a big bank account. It's better than a big salary. 
Uh, Proverbs 24, three through five, it says, by wisdom, a house is built. And, and a house is symbolic to a life. It's symbolic to a business. So it's, it's your whole life. So by wisdom, your life will be built. And through understanding, it is established. Through knowledge, its rooms are filled with rare and beautiful treasures. The wise prevail through great power, and those who have knowledge muster their strength. And so um, that is going to be one of the benefits that you have by spending time with Jesus. That wisdom of God will be downloaded to you. And let me just share with you, there's going to be challenges ahead, and you need the wisdom of God. Okay, there's a verse in Colossians and one three uh, Colossians one three fifteen. It says, uh, "The ho- let the Holy Spirit be the umpire of your life." It's in the Amplified uh, edition, and so the Holy Spirit will tell you if it's a ball or a strike. He'll tell you if it's a right or what's right or wrong. And then uh, to go on to uh, into the next session. When we spend time with Jesus, what happens is we begin to take on his character. So I have this, um, uh, we recently, like about nine months ago, 10 months ago, we hired a director for our, uh, uh, for our nonprofit Thrive Teaching and Supernatural Business, right? And so he's got a British accent, right? And he says some things differently. And him and I have been spending some time together because, you know, we're going over and we're, you know, like we're down, we got, uh, got our book on like audio version and we have uh, it all in Spanish. And so we spend some time together. And instead of like going, if something's good, instead of going, oh, that's great. He goes like this. That's brilliant. So I found myself going like this. Hey, Tom, that's brilliant. Whoever you spend time with, you will become like. And when we spend time with Jesus, we begin to bring on, take on his character. And with that, I, I think we'll want to, we'll take like a, a five or 10. Are you guys good? I mean, I know we're videoing this, but you guys good. I could go on another 20 minutes and then take a break or how, how are you guys doing? Yeah. Okay, good. And I'll just jump right in. Yeah. You know, like I knew when I was coming here that like, uh, uh, pastor Jared and pastor Lucinda are pretty chill. So, I knew that, like, hey, you know, it's not a lot of pressure, right? So um, we'll start to take on the character of God. We'll start to take on the character of God as we spend time with Jesus. There's no substitute for it. You know, uh, I hear people say uh, all the time, like, hey, instead of, uh, instead of uh, spending time with Jesus, I'm just donating to the church, which I think it's great if you donate to the church, right? You know, tomorrow I'll be speaking on... Uh, if you, uh, if you build the church, you build God's kingdom. As a byproduct of that, you'll build your own life. And so, um, so uh, the, I'm going to talk about the five pillars of character. You know, I, I don't think um, anything uh, uh, more has been dealt with me by God than character. You know, like when I was when I was praying and asking God. Uh, to increase my business, um, and I, I, I just wanted to wanted to do something for the kingdom, right? And so, uh, you know, like I thought God would give me like uh, like these breakthroughs, like with business deals and stuff like that. And so, a lot of those things have happened and came, but the majority of it, God dealt with me was on my character. In First Timothy four sixteen, it says, in the Message translation, it says, "Keep a firm grasp." on both your character and your teaching. Don't be diverted. Just keep at it. Both you and those who hear you will experience salvation. And so I, you know, I'm praying and asking God to grow my business. And uh, God starts dealing with me in these areas, right? And I, I'd say no bigger area God dealt with me was in the, uh, uh, the area of integrity. No other area greater than that. And, and the way... You know, so much, and God dealt with me so much about integrity. I'm just going to be honest with you. I thought there was something wrong with me, right? I'm like, am I that bad, right? Because, you know, I'm praying and asking God to grow my business. 
And he's like this, I want you to stay far away from the line. And I'm like, okay, you know, I want you to handle everything, you know, down to the penny with integrity. And so like, I'm just like, I, I thought there, there was something wrong with me. But really what it was is God was setting me up for a supernatural blessing because the supernatural miraculous of God cannot happen to somebody that's not walking in integrity. It just can't. It won't. And, and, and when it does, you'll see what happens. It's in, um, and I, I might not, oh, it's Proverbs 21, six. These are, this is what happens when you don't operate in integrity. Proverbs 21, six in the message, make it to the top by lying and cheating, get paid back with smoke and a promotion to death. God cannot bless with what's not of integrity. And so uh, let me give you, uh, give you the definition of integrity. Just, you know, from the dictionary, it says a strict, uncompromising adherence to a moral code of ethics. And uh, my definition is um, doing the right thing at the right time for the right reason. And so I, I'm so uh, glad that I have the Holy Spirit and I have my wife and I have my pastor because, you know, one thing that will help you in integrity it's like, first of all, just make a decision that you and your household are going to serve the Lord, right? And then gather some people around you and let them know you have permission to speak into my life. I don't give everybody permission to speak into my life, right? You know, like sometimes people come up, one guy came up to me and said, hey, I prayed and I felt like God said you were going to pay off my car. I was like, well, when God tells me, maybe I'll do it, right? You know what I mean? Like that guy does not have permission to speak into my life, right? You know, I, I don't give people permission to speak into my life, you know, like uh, on marriage that have been divorced three times, right? I don't want to, I'm not going to take wisdom from them. You know, someone that's been bankrupt, uh, I'm not going to take financial advice from them. And, and there's scriptures in the Bible that say, be careful on who you take advice from, right? But there's specific people in my life, my wife, my business partners, my pastor, my kids. My, and my kids love to speak into my life. I, I don't know, you know, I don't know if any of you guys have uh, adult kids, but man, when they get off, uh, they love to speak into your life. But I will be honest with you, I've gotten wisdom and insight from my kids. And so um, having people uh, speak into your life and say, hey, listen, you might be going the wrong direction. Because if you just are uh, diverted just a little bit, you could be going right towards destruction. Let me give you a couple other scriptures. Proverbs 11.1 1. in the message. God hates cheating in the marketplace. He loves it when business is above board. Proverbs 13.6. Righteousness guards the man of integrity. And here's some of the benefits. There's a protection. Uh, integrity is part of your protection connection. Righteousness guards a person of integrity, but wickedness overthrows the sinner. And then um, Proverbs 3.27, do not withhold good from those to whom it is due when it is in your power to act. In the message translation, it says, if you owe someone some money and the money is right in your pocket, don't tell them to come back tomorrow. That's one of the ways areas that God uh, really dealt with me. And it was, don't mess with other people's money. So when I, I, was, a, I was a contractor, uh, a subcontractor, a drywall contractor, I only became a general contractor because when I was working for general contractors, I couldn't get them to pay me. I remember some things in the old days, pastor, I mean, I used to have to follow people home, right? You know, like to get paid. And they're like, they're like, how did you know where I live? I'm like, I followed you home. I, and they're like, where did you learn how to do that kind of stuff? I'm like, you don't want to know, right? <laughs> Back in the old days when people owed us money and we'd find them, right? So I became a general contractor. The main reason why was because I couldn't get the general contractors to pay me when I was a drywall contractor. And so um, it became like a real big thing for me. I really wanted to be the guy that paid faster than anybody else. 
And so this was really deep in my heart and I didn't know there would be a benefit from it, you know, but um, every subcontractor in the world ended up wanting to work for me. And this is what I found out. People that get paid are happy. Happy people do better work. Happy people bring a happy uh, atmosphere to the job site. Happy people have more creative jo ideas. They share them with us on how to do the jobs more efficiently. These happy people have become the, um, uh, the marketing team for my company. They tell me where all the jobs are. Some of my competitors have marketing teams marketing divisions at my office and my company you know how uh how many people we have on our marketing department zero me when someone needs a job they call me and we're talking about for uh you know we have 10 project managers sometimes up to 19 or 20 projects going at one time with no marketing department my clients became my marketing department So, uh, and one other area uh, of character I want to share with is uh, paying your taxes. And so I know it's really hard. I mean, living in the state of California, right? I mean, like, you're like, oh my goodness. I mean, you live in the state of California, you're being like taxed like eight different ways, right? And so um, uh, when we, we first had our first breakout year in, um, at some point, maybe I'll share the testimony. Like we went from um, our, in our first breakout year, like uh, our income tripled. Right, my wife and I's income tripled our first breakout year, and and I'll, I want to share with you. Uh, maybe I might share the whole story, but uh, that year the Lord told us to give. Uh, we went from making a hundred thousand dollars, the two of us, to in one year we went to making three hundred thousand dollars. And so the Lord dealt with us and said, "I want you to give a hundred thousand dollars of that three hundred thousand. So it was like the Lord had like a uh, you know like a math equation or a, a business plan for us. I didn't fully understand it. It was a hundred thousand dollars to live on, the two of us, um, and then a uh, hundred thousand dollars to give, and then we'd owe a hundred thousand dollars in taxes. Um, so um, I didn't really understand it, and uh, I think I bought a bunch of equipment, right? And so I met with my tax guy, and he said, "Yeah, I think you paid enough taxes. Like I think you're good." And so uh, then uh, February first came along, and I met with him, and he goes, "We made a mistake." And I said, what do you mean we made a mistake? He said, um, you owe $100,000 in taxes. And I'm all, how did we make a mistake? I'm a contractor. You're the tax professional. How did we make a mistake? And he, and he goes like this, don't worry. We can cook the books. We can fix it. And, you know, if you get caught, you probably won't go to jail. And I go like this. First of all, you're fired. Second of all, we'll pay our taxes. And so, um, but we didn't have any money. <laughs> and so um, they were due on April 15th. And, you know, um, the year prior, we had made an investment. Um, in, and we were like a junior investor in a, um, a piece of real estate. And so um, I told my wife, I said, honey, we're just going to have to make payments on it. And we'll have to pay the penalties. And. It's just the way it is, right? And both of us agreed about uh, agreed on it. My my wife is um uh, really a, uh, she really holds me accountable on that kind of stuff. And so um I got a call on April first uh, from the guy that I had invested with in this property, and he said, "Hey, the property uh, we got an all cash offer property," and I'm like, "Super cool, man!" And he's like, um. It's gonna close. Uh, it's gonna close on April fourteenth. And I said, "Awesome! I can take that money and put it towards my taxes." You know, because I had made this uh, pretty pretty small investment in this property. He goes, Mike, you're not gonna believe uh, uh, how much this guy's paying for it. And I'm like, "He told me how much, and I, you know, I wasn't able to do exactly because I owned a small piece of it." And I said, "Okay, well, what part will I get back?" And he said, uh, "Your return with your capital." will be $99,000. And we got that $99,000 and we paid our taxes. And so, 
I don't know how God will move supernaturally in your life. And so, um, but he has moved supernaturally in our lives in the area of integrity.